Hello everyone and welcome to The Break Run. My name is Frank. My name is Kevin. And I'm Sebastian and today we're talking about the latest theme park news. So first let's talk about Busch Gardens Williamsburg because they have recently announced that they're going to change their operating schedule to be a year-round operation and not a seasonal park. So what do you guys think about this? So it's interesting. This is the northernmost park in the continental United States that we've seen go to a full year-round operation. Yeah. And they typical aligned with the SeaWorld Park model, they are going all events to carry themselves through this entire year. Which makes sense, yeah. Yeah. I think the event-based model works for SeaWorld really well in like all their southern parks. So they're trying it up out there in Williamsburg and I think it's really good for like all the northern folks like around New York, New Jersey area to have something to do where they don't have to fly a long way or yeah. they can just drive over there because in America, six hour drive, it's nothing special. Yeah, and I think this is honestly the best time to do it, especially with COVID and lockdown still in place. People are gonna look for things to do to leave the house and why not go to, to Bush Gardens because you could never go to Bush Gardens January, February before, but now you can. So I know Six Flags Magic Mountain kind of broke news a few years ago when they announced that they were going to do this year round 365 day operation. So even though Bush Gardens is not at that 365 day operation yet, but having that year round model is also going to help with staffing. So they don't have to lay off people for a few months to rehire. They can keep the same full time staff on throughout the whole year. So I'm really excited and I hope. Uh, they have a, a successful time with it. You know, it's interesting too. We talked about this in our holiday video. We're seeing a lot of parks throughout the country stay open later and later into the year. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they were afraid that they couldn't stay open because it was too cold. Mm -hmm. And now that we're open past Christmas, we're open until January, it's cold then. It's going to be not really any colder yeah. in yeah. February or March. Why not continue the season? So yeah. Yeah. it'll be interesting to see what happens with them. Yeah, for sure. So next, let's talk about Falcon's Flight. So this is a new Intamin coaster coming to Six Flags Cadilla, and it's supposed to be the world's tallest, fastest, and longest coaster. So we kind of heard about this about two years ago, but now they're releasing more data and the specs on it, and it's now in full development. So what do you guys think about this record-breaking roller coaster coming? I just want to ride it. Like, it looks <laughs> amazing. Um, when I first saw it, I was like, yeah, it's never going no to happen. It's no way it's going to happen. Like, and I'm still the same way. Like, I still don't believe I'm very that they skeptical, I yeah. r really don't think they will build it. However, if they will build it, I will be one of the first ones to ride it because <laughs> it looks so, so good. Yeah. Gosh, it makes you think how expensive it'll be to, if they actually do construct it. Yeah. I mean, you look at the average roller coaster, it's $25, $30 million. So this, is, this has got to be hundreds. Oh yeah. yeah, especially considering that it's going to be over a 500 foot drop. It's going to be about 150 plus miles an hour. With this stats, it's just going to mean more money, obviously. So yeah. um, it's crazy that besides that they're just building this, they're building a brand new park. So the budget on this must be through the roof. Again, I'm, I, who knows? I won't believe it until I actually see people on the ride and see yeah. it happening. Just because with uncertainty with the economy now and things might fall through with this. But it's just great news to see that we're getting we're inching closer to seeing this. Well, and then also in the Middle East, you have the world's fastest roller coaster. Yes. Yeah. So if you want this project to be successful and take people away from Abu Dhabi, you need to have something that can beat that. So yeah. we'll see where it goes. Awesome. Yeah. So next we want to talk about the Manhattan Express. Unfortunately, a few weeks ago, it had a little derailment incident. Thankfully, they were still testing and no one was on it. But Kevin, explain why this possibly could have happened. Well, so the Manhattan Express is the roller coaster on top of the New York, New York Casino. Mm -hmm. um, it was manufactured by Togo, who's now out of business. Um, and, and Togo rides are known for being very rough. Yes. Um, yeah. And this ride desperately needed some kind of TLC. So New York, New York went out and reached out to Premier Rides to make some new trains for this. And I looked at pictures. It looks like these new trains look very similar to the Skyrocket trains that Premier has made for their other roller coasters that they've manufactured themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope they will fix it pretty soon so uh, we can ride that iconic coaster again. Yeah. Um, because it was a good addition for the New York, New York. But let's talk about Dieselland. It's mm -hmm. a new FEC that came into uh, Orlando and they built it into an old mall that had been staying empty for so, so long. And now yeah. there's some more life into it. And I think it's a really great addition on putting some more concept into a mall that stays empty because with like all the online shopping going on and like all the uh, businesses going away, yeah. I think it's a really good way of bringing the FSC closer to the people 
and uh, helping out the communities a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's totally smart for utilizing current space that they already have. But instead of having shops, you kind of have different attractions. So instead of having an old shop, you have a bowling alley or something unique like that. Um, we actually got to go there during their soft opening. And while not everything was fully built, um, we didn't really do anything. We just kind of went to see around. It was a really, very cool concept. I think maybe the execution wasn't the best yet, but it was cool how they have so many different things combined into one centralized attraction and they use the old mall space. Yeah. And Go ahead. I also think it will do so much better outside of Orlando because Orlando like recently got so many small FEC attractions with Entredi, um, Icon Top Park. Golf, like yeah. all those uh, stuff. And so I'm, I think the uh, market is a little bit over exaggerated in Orlando and you have to do something over the top uh, to get uh, people yeah. uh, into the gate. So I'm not sure if it's working in Orlando, but any other metropolitan area, I think it would work so, so well. Well, and think about how many abandoned malls there are throughout the United States. This is a perfect use of space for them. Yeah. So why not try yeah. it out somewhere else? Yeah, so hopefully this concept will be continued elsewhere as well. Yeah. So that about wraps up everything we wanted to talk about this week. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's going to be more news coming down the pipeline in the coming months, but in the meantime, that's your January news roundup from us here at The Break Run. As always, thank you so much for watching your videos. Please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us here on YouTube for more coming theme park videos. Again, thanks for watching today and have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye. Bye. So recently, Busch Gardens Williamsburg... <laughs> what? <laughs> You're doing so good! <laughs> So recently, Busch Gardens Williamsburg announced. <laughs> you looked over and you were like, oh, I don't have anything to know. And then you were like, I just can't look.